Sure. <laughs> Well, hello everybody! Look who made a mistake and gave me the keys to the Millennium Falcon! That's right, Will Dunn screwed up! But here we are today, back again for a little Waterdeep Dragon Heist, as we are going to do a little something special to start off. We have had our dear friend Ruva gone for a few episodes, but not forgotten, as the character has been away with a, a staple canon figure of the Forgotten Realms universe, and we'll see exactly what has happened in that time. But before we go forward, we have to go back, and uh, uh, Vandy, why don't you say hi and tell us who you're playing? Hi, everybody. It's been a while. Um, I'm playing Ruba. She's the Tabaxi Barbarian uh, from the Thunder Tree Clan, and... She's excited to crush some skulls, hopefully, and not, you know, end up mortally injured. Anyways, we'll see. Sounds good. Sounds good. And so, as this is a Ruva-specific, at least first part of this episode, the whole crew will be back and around as soon as we get back into the main storyline. But a storyline that is important, we are about to have. So, with important storylines, you need to know and have a basis for what's going on. <laughs> so, without further ado, and by back by popular demand, hold on one sec. Oh, that's ding, nice. ding, 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 ding. Hear ye, hear ye. In my drunken stupor. I have failed to relate to you some important headlines from prior days and sunsets. They are all oddly specific. Ruva finds a ruby. Ruva looks into said ruby and sees a murder. Ruva meets two odd aristocratic assholes. Am I allowed to say assholes? Ruva goes into the sewers. Ruva meets a mysterious ash-wielding stranger. And Ruva disappears. Am I done? I'm done. I shall see you on the morrow. And so, now that you are brought back up to speed as to what has happened with Ruva, Ruva entered the sewers beneath Waterdeep with the rest of her companions, looking for a man named Floon. But before she could engage in this activity and before she could help and aid her friends in this rescue attempt, she was confronted by a man in a dark black hood. And as he said that his prey was looking for her too. He cut a wall of ash with a blade drawn from his side, separating them from her party. And when the ash settled, Ruva and the man were gone. But where to? Now is the time to find out. Ruva, you blank and you see this wall of ash as it starts to move and ripple, much like the waves of an ocean or even carrying the muck and mire of a still pond, the ash moves and then it drops. And when it does, you are in a different place. Your friends are gone. And the man, how tall is Ruva? Uh, oh, geez, she is uh, not short. Let me get the exact number for you. Uh, she's like six something. Six two. Well, you loom about a foot taller than the man who is standing in front of you. And he carries himself with a much larger presence, but his features are obscured even in the dim light of this tunnel by a deep hood that he wears dropped almost to his nose. And as he looks up a bit, revealing a strong chin with black hair speckled with gray, 
you see that he smiles a bit. Are you ready? As I'll ever be. Where are we going? You have gained, you have gained some attention. Attention of people that, uh, it's hard to occupy their thoughts. And the more they are thinking of you, the less they are thinking of me. Come this way, but be quiet. You see no indication of your friends. Where did my friends go? Are we not taking them with us? He looks back over his shoulder, again revealing more of the humanoid face. You believe him to either be human or half-elven. The features are sharp and match that of those races. They're fine. I'm confident they can do what needs to be done below. But only you can help me. And he begins to move further down the hall in front of you. Wait. What are we going? His back stiffens a bit at the the volume of your voice. And you see him turn very rigid as if from the waist and not from the neck. You need to be quiet. These are the shadows, Lioness. Only silence lives in the shadows. I'd very much like to live. And I'll start following him. Roll me a stealth check. Twenty-one. So as the man in front of you pads off on silent feet, you notice that that rigid back that he seems to carry himself with turns toward you, and not because he's heard anything, but it's almost a measure of condescending appreciation as he didn't hear a thing, and he likes that. And so as the two of you creep further down into this sewer tunnel, you come upon a door. And as you both kind of creep and bleed into the shadows of a much larger room, Ruva, you see that this place, wide and expansive for a sewer room, seems to hold an air of finery about it, as if someone tried to make this look like a court audience chamber at some point. There are tattered curtains and tapestries that hang from the walls. There seems to have been an element of paint applied at one time, but has long since fallen into decay. And as you creep into this room, you realize immediately that it is occupied. As you see a large half-orc seemingly lording over a man tied in a chair. And the half-orc says, Who are I really? And the man sitting in the chair glares up with an eye of confidence. And he says, Well, my name's Floon. And there's a vicious backhand as the half-orc drives the man in the chair down onto his back as the four legs tilt to the left. No... Who are you really? And the man on the floor just smiles. In front of you, the hooded man that you are following keeps to the shadows of the right as he looks back and with just a slight hint of movement motions you forward. I follow. Hesitantly, I'd like I'd, if it's Floon, I'm... My attention is definitely there, too. The man in front of you seems to be taking you around this action, seemingly having no cause or reason to interfere. And as you get further into the gloom of this room, you see a raised dais 
to what would be the south if you've kept your direction straight in your head below ground. And there is a chair, much like a throne on this dais. And when you see the figure seated on this throne, you witness what looks like a long, tall, taller than you, humanoid figure, thin, almost absurdly long and scarecrow-like arms decked in iron robe. But all of that pales in comparison to the head that is seated, seating atop, or seated atop the neck of this creature. It is much like an octopus with the large, emotionless eyes, the tendrils in a beard down the chest that writhe and wriggle on their own accord, or you believe their own accord. But even this creature seems not to notice the shadows or the two that creep through them. And again, the man in front of you motions you deeper into the shadows towards a distant door. Can I make a quick nature check to see what kind of creature that is? Yeah, you know what? I'll take a I'll take a nature check for this one just simply because of uh, the background that Ruba would be. Oh, just a seven. Well, you know what? With a seven, I'll tell you this. One time long ago, there was a tale told around a fire of a creature resembling this. You were young. You don't remember the name of the creature, but you do remember being frightened by the story. Oof. I will definitely stay quiet into the shadows. You are able to creep through, and as you get to this far door, the man kind of pulls to one side as he's his eyes and the hood and the depths of the shadows that are even deeper on the man seem to stare intently at this tentacled-faced creature. And he motions again with silent fingers, and he points towards the door. He is asking you to open it. I will open it, or attempt to. I would like you to roll a stealth check for me, please. Uh, 13. The door pulls free in this damp atmosphere of the sewers, silent, but as soon as it reaches about three feet as far as door from jam as it opens, there is just a slight and you see the back of the creature with the bearded tentacles stiffen and the man in the hood that is with you points towards the opening in the door. I need you to I'm make gonna... a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. Yeah, I want to slip right through it. Dex save throw? Uh saving throw oh that's not very good a four <laughs> okay so as you go to move it's not in enough time as your position is revealed but not your it's your shadow moving in shadow and you can see the creature stand up from the throne and turns to look in that direction as the man that is with you you feel a strong grip on your shoulder as he rushes through into this room with you pulling the door closed in front of you you see a raised ring of stone you hear movement from behind you and the man that is with you presses something into your palm. We have to go through that ring now. Hurry. And he turns towards the door and pulls out a red sword and a jeweled dagger from his waistband as he backs towards it, giving you a moment to climb into the ring. Yep, going right in there. Make a dex check for me, please. Or athletics or acrobatics, whichever you'd like. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's do athletics. 23. It's 
better. Okay, so describe how Rupa is able to clear the stone floor of the 20 feet and get up into this ring, which is roughly 10 feet above the ground. Uh, Ruva probably has, she's done a lot of climbing back on her island, um, immediately seeing which handholds there are that stick out. She'll be able to kind of dig her claws in and kind of launch up as quickly as she can. Almost like a really fast wall climber. Just, yeah. Okay, so as she scatters up, turn around and make a perception check for me as you are the in a great position to regard what's going on. In fact, make this uh, check with advantage for me, please. Okay. Uh, 12. Okay, so as you get up and turn around, you see the man with the hood that is with you the long red sword and the gauntleted red glove and the jeweled dagger in his, what you would assume to be his dominant right hand, as he backs up towards the ring, you see him lightly leap to the first area of the ring, leap up to your position, still with his back to you. And as he's turning and facing you, the stone that he pressed into your palm begins to warm as he takes a position by your shoulder inside the ring. And just as the door opens and you see a tentacle writhe around the outside as if the creature is creeping through the door and the tentacles are curling around the wood itself, there is a light that begins to swirl around your eyes. And just as its own black, emotionless eyes turn and look up towards the ring, the two of you vanish. With, with one beat, you are in the sewers. With the next beat, Ruba, you are in a room. And if you would sh- turn towards Fantasy Grounds, I will share that with you. And as you and your friend enter the room, see if I can plop him down. See, can you be seen? Make sure his visibility is on. There we go. And so as your friend appears in this room, you look around and notice an exquisite You can only imagine it to be a reading room of some kind, perhaps a small library, uh, an office, or even a room dedicated towards uh, accounting or journaling, but it's much too lush to be something of a commercial nature. This is a private study. And as you see and look around and smell the fine woods and the fine mahogany and an air of incense hanging that is in and of itself speaks of great wealth you see a large leather chair you see a small table and a book beside it the man that is with you rushes over to one of the windows and peers out into the night marking whatever he is marking he turns towards you and nods it's safe to speak who First of all, who are you? Do I know you from somewhere? Artemis. I certainly hope not. What, have you been watching me or something? No, no. You see, the people that own this house have an interest in you. And that, of course, makes me interested in you. Are you one of their people? (laughs) I've been hired to kill them. But only on a specific day. And only at a specific time. And in a very specific place. He leans forward. But again, as you are taller... He kind of cocks his head as he looks up at you. 
I believe you have seen this place. I might have. Once, twice. If it's the same people. I remember these people. They killed a girl. An innocent woman. I was not myself when I saw them. It was a a sacrificial room. Yes. Where Are was it? Not... <sighs> Where? Uh, it was in Did some it... kind of well, sewer, perhaps. Underground. It was not above the ground, I can tell you. It was dark. Ooh. And cold. Who are they? Why, why are you hunting them? Because I'm being paid to do so. I should have known. Money seems to rule everything in the City of Splendors. Not Such a foreign everything. concept. No? What is greater than money? For one that does not care for coin, you must know of its substitution. Well, to my family and my tribe, it is artifacts. Strength, family, and power are what we consider value. Money has no place where we are. And there you have it. Family. And that is why I am here to kill two parents. Has their child hired you? Or are you this child? (laughs) Were I their child, I would hire me. Now the children are young. Two of them are anyway. No. This is not a family that needs to have a lineage, at least not with sires of their kind. But coin speaks louder than lineage to me. But I have one question for you in your tale that you've told. He continues to look around the room as if he's constantly on padded feet, making sure that everything is quiet, controlled. The man seems the very epitome of order. Can I take a quick peek at the book? Yeah, absolutely. I just like, while he's speaking, I'll just kind of like, maybe look at the book, almost touch it see written on it that I can recognize. Absolutely, yep. Um, It seems to be a journal of some kind, and it is very eloquently embroidered with a name, Pasalanter, and another, Victorio. Victorio and... It seems Castellanter is the surname, and Victorio is whoever owns this journal's name. Okay. Um, Do you open it? I will look at him and... Hmm? Have you... Do you open the book? Uh... I don't want quite touch it. I don't want to touch it. I Like, I, I'm too worried about what it is. Um, I'll probably just look at it and s- see the name. Um, what is the question you want to ask me, though? He turns and sees you kind of eyeing the book, and for a moment, you see his hood cock 
kind of to the side as if he too is regarding it. And again, though the eyes never meet yours, you're assuming that in the depths there are eyes in there somewhere. The man says, you may look at it, it is not trapped. Call it my intuition. I trust him and I'll open the book. Roll me an intelligence check. This is not in relation to any type of trap. This is just to see if you can glean something from what are essentially everyday journals of appears to be a nobleman. Some of its weather, some of its local events. Yeah, probably not. Ruba's not that smart. <laughs> That's a nine. Well, no, I mean, you're, you're looking through it and it's just one of those things where there's so much um, and it's none of it's organized. It's not a chapter book, it's a journal. So it's kind of a definite stream of consciousness here. And as you're looking through, the only thing that catches your eye for this, in this whole list of just everyday observations, you see something that says, our eyes see all, and it's underlined. Okay. Okay. The man walks up to you, the man known as Artemis, and he keeps kind of a, he's always squared to you. He's never gives you a shoulder or gives you his back. It's always, You've been around warriors. You are one yourself, Ruba. You realize this is a man that's not accustomed to giving a weakness to any potential adversary. But you can tell by his relaxed nature that it's just instinct and nothing that really kind of lends itself to a threat that he feels. It's just a habit. And he says, mm, as for my question, when you describe the scene that you saw... The girl being killed. You refer to her as innocent. How do you know that? I don't know. A hunch, perhaps? She... didn't make any sense to me, I suppose. Why a young child like that would be sacrificed at an altar with two very finely dressed people. I wonder if I was getting the emotions of the... of the person I was seeing the eyes through. That's impossible. I don't know. And then he stops himself. It shouldn't be possible. I didn't think seeing through a ruby was possible until a few days ago. What? Are we not? <laughs> he remains silent, but he nods as if happy with his decision to bring you along. This is the home of these people that you have met, this man and this woman. I cannot kill them until a specific day, in a specific place, in a specific way. I have brought you here to show me that place. And if you are to be believed, and I think you are, we must go down. So, Ruva, are you ready? As I'll ever be. I'll seem visibly you know, disappointed that we can't kill them now. <laughs> um, there's kind of a, 
you know, nod. And you notice that there is one door leading out of this room. And again, much like he did in the sewers below, he pulls forth just the jeweled dagger. And as he kind of creeps to the side of the door that would open first, he nods to you to open the door. Roll me another stealth check. Okay. Stealth. A 15. And much like the rest of this house, the door itself is well maintained. And as you were able to silently release the latch and pull the door open, you are met with a much larger library as the door kind of ekes out into this wider space. And I will give us a little more to work with. Oops. Do do. Okay. Let me get some more from Fantasy Grounds here as I creep out a bit. There we go. So as you enter this room, Ruva, uh, the man creeping through, notice Artemis creeps in first, and there are stacks and stacks of books everywhere. And as you walk into this room, you can tell immediately there's no one. It is unoccupied. It is impeccably clean, though. So determining whether or not someone has been here, is returning, is, you know, has just stepped out, it's impossible to say. But as you walk in here, you notice several unique items in this room, or you would if you succeed on this perception check. Uh, 16. Okay. So as you walk into this room and you see the large library that's creeping around, all of these books that are lining the walls are large, ancient, leather-bound tomes of various sizes, colors, and dyes. But what catches your eye specifically is a row or rows of jars they look like large, almost flower pots that you would see behind the counter at London's Fog or something that would contain sugar, coffee, or tea. And they are in a place of prominence at the end of this library as they are kind of arrayed in an almost ceremonial pattern. And you see Artemis pad over to one of them or to the one row of them as he begins to look curious himself. The jeweled dagger is still in his hand. I'm going to take a look at those as well and uh, if I recognize what's in them. Um, when you get close and you begin to read the titles that seem to be labels on the outside of these jars, roll me an arcana check, please. Oof, not my strong suit. In eight. Much like the story that you had remembered as a child before, you remember cause of your people being able to do something, and you believe that this might be similar, but you're not sure. There was a way for your people to capture the wind or the weather of a specific day, a memory, a sound, a sunset, things that could be never replicated but viewed again or heard again, smelled, touched. It was an emotional or a sensorial capture. And as you are reading through all of these, you realize that if your memory is to be correct, these jars contain things like songs performed on a specific day by a specific person. There is a speech that seems to have been given by a a man named Kelvin Blackstaff. And you see Artemis as he 
picks up one of the jars, looks at it, snorts, and puts it back down. And when he places it, you read the title or the label as Wolfgar and the Crystal Shard. Something funny? It's amazing the liberties that artists will take. What are we looking for here? Wasting time. A way down, but there is no way in here. We must go deeper. And he motions towards the door opposite of the one that you entered as he creeps forward again with the... Roll that stealth check for me. Yeah, I'm already there. I'm moving. Oh, that's a natural one. Oh, no. It's a five, but it's a nat five. It's a one. It's a one. So, uh, as, as you open up the door, let me give you the view as we, as nothing seems to want to move. Do, do, do. Let me creep this open. I'll take it down that far. Um, as you open into a room that is the, you recognize it because there's large glass doors at the south of this position or the, the southeast of this position that show the outst- outside or the exterior of this lovely home. And you realize you've reached a foyer of some kind, a grand entrance hall. And there is a harpsichord against the wall from the door that you opened. And as you open the door, and as it begins to creak a bit, by no indication of anything that you did wrong, the harpsichord plays a single note. Ding! Artemis looks at you. We have to move faster. He motions towards the door to the north, which seems to be the only way deeper into the house that doesn't lead outside. And he nods towards it as he creeps towards the side of the door again. And I'll move Artemis over so we can see exactly where he is. And as he creeps over there, his jeweled dagger out, he motions again for you to get the door. And as you move in to open it, you hear a whisper that's barely audible. Try not to play the harpsichord again. Just a quick hand motion. I'll try to open the door. Another stealth check for me. Uh, why did that not roll? Um, I got it. I, I have an 11 that came through for you. Thank you. This is you who oh. opened the door. Oop, am I breaking up? Or... I think we're good. Okay. As you open the door, you immediately see through the crack as Artemis kind of creeps in just below you. And for a moment, it would be comical if the scene weren't so tense. As you, the taller of the two, as you crack open the door, you're higher. And Artemis, is the top of his hood kind of brushes against your chin as he creeps beneath you. And in front of you, you see two guards dressed in finery. They have large, puffy sleeves that indicate their shoulders down to their elbows. They are both carrying spears and are at attention, or they should be. One of them appears to be smoking, as they are simply guarding what looks like a stairway leading down. But their backs are to you. Artemis nods towards the one on the right. 
as he begins to creep towards the one on the left. He doesn't have to speak to tell you he wants you to kill this man. Um, how am I going to kill him here? Uh, I'm going to try to not use my uh, weapon because it'll probably be hella loud. So um, I'm going to try to go up and just snap his neck. Okay, so you have, as a tabaxi, you have natural claws as well, which I believe mm-hmm. give you a D4 plus whatever your modifier happens to be. Um, I will allow you to use that kind of narratively as your ability to snap this neck. So go ahead and roll me an attack with advantage as you move in on these doomed guards. Okay. Uh... A 14? Let's see. As you reach up to take the man by the throat, you didn't realize that just beneath the finery of the outfits that are on, your thumb claw scrapes against metal. And the man turns and reaches up and grabs your hand just as the strike does not hit. I'd like you to roll some initiative for me, please. Fuck! God damn it! Shit! Barbarians! Ugh. All right. Um. Initiative. Well, it's a four. Oh, wow. What are we? What is with these rolls? It's either like amazing or crap. God damn it! <laughs> That's okay, because uh, they rolled a two. So you have your attack here as you are creeping in, and I will grab you, Ruba, and place you right in front of this guard, who is indicated by the sea as Artemis is deeper into the room, hopefully dispatching the guard that he was tasked to kill. Good call. You may may do whatever you would like against the one in front of you. Okay, I am going to uh, I am going to take my harpoon then and just try to stab it up through his his jaw. Okay. So that is an eleven, which is not going to hit. <laughs> you see, as again the harpoon scrapes past metal that was exposed now as the harpoon kind of creeps across a very ornate breastplate that is on the front very spaniard in nature um and he turns with the spear and you see the man strike with it as is a five gonna hit Ruben? it is definitely not <laughs> So for a moment, there's a loud cling cling as both spear and harpoon miss their mark. And we are back to your turn as you are mere inches from this man as he is thrust with his spear and extended a little bit over its reach as he's staring at you and you see him inhale as if preparing to yell for help. Uh, Harpoon through the mat. That is an eight. Eight. Okay. So you hear the inhale, and as he goes to scream, you see the point of a dagger pierce out through the throat, and you get covered in a fine mist of blood. And as the man silently drops to the ground, carried by the robe, the cloaked figure that you're with, as soon as it passes, though you can only see the bottom half of your companion Artemis's face, you can tell there is a look of disdain as this was much louder than he anticipated as he slowly lowers the Castellanter guard to the ground and he indicates the stairs that seemingly lead into the basement of the facility. Let me go first. That is probably wise. I'm, uh... Okay. As you creep downstairs again, 
moving quietly, you notice that Artemis moves. You see him, a, a bracelet upon his wrist of his dominant hand flares a bit with blue energy. And you see both bodies of the guards turn and disappear. And as he drops down into a stance of stealth, I would like you to roll stealth for me as well. Hopefully that goes a little better. A 15. Excellent. So as you climb down to the bottom of the stairs, Ruva, I would like you to make a perception check with advantage. Okay, with advantage. Uh, so 18. And with an 18 Rupa, as you get to the bottom of the stairs into this subterranean stone hewn area, you immediately recognize where you are. This was where you were in the vision of the Ruby when you began to creep down a hall. And as you turn, that very hall is exposed. And you see the same path that you stepped in the Ruby lies before you. Artemis seems to be looking in an opposite direction as he searches the room. Nope, I'm just going to grab him by the shoulder and kind of turn him over to the direction. And I'll say, let me go first. And as I'll lead him that way. Check, roll a perception check when you grab him. Okay. <laughs> Uh, a 14. As you grab him and indicate that you'll go first, you feel a sharp, just a a hint of a, a, like a bite. And down at your stomach, the jeweled dagger rests ready to plunge in as the man that you are with is not used to being touched, even in a familiar sense. But he immediately pulls the dagger away looks in the direction that you're indicating and says, What do you mean it's a blank wall? What do you mean? That's... That's the room. I see nothing. I'm gonna gonna stick my hand through wherever, like, I'm gonna try to walk through a little bit, like, put my arm motion it passes what you don't see to be any type of obstruction but as soon as you pass by what would be the exit of this room into the hallway you see Artemis step forward as he puts the jeweled dagger into his belt and he reaches up and pulls back the hood and for the first time you can see this man's face in its entirety his short cropped black hair speckled with gray, a bit of a beard on his chin, and the man would be handsome if not for the utter emotionless state of his eyes, the eyes which are now very wide. I can't see that. He looks at you. Now that is something. Lead on. And he pulls his hood back up. Hmm. You should keep your hood up more often. Add this look. <laughs> you hear a slight chuckle. Hmm. Grab onto my arm. And I'll start. I, I, He stays close to you. He does not grab your arm, but he stays close enough to be, you can feel points of his body touch yours as you creep through this area. Roll a stealth check for me. Okay. That's a, another natural one. You take two mm-hmm. steps. You, you take two steps and you hear a smack on the back. You feel a smack on the back of your head. Be. Quiet. We are shadows, not an avalanche. Try again. 
Let's go. I mean, I'm more of an avalanche, tsunami, whatever. I'll stealth check again. So much better. It's an eight. All you hear from behind you is, <sighs> but you are able to proceed. I'm like the talking at the bit. Ruva, as you continue down this hallway, a hallway that you've walked before in shoes and feet that were not your own, you creep forward, and as the room again widens into an open space, you see the black altar of stone with its gutters and crevices carved into it. Gutters and crevices that you know because you've witnessed feed and sluice away the lifeblood of the sacrificial victims that are slain atop it. But beyond the altar, there's no one here. And Artemis again steps forward, rushing past you lightly as he looks at the altar and begins to look around the room. This is it. This, this is, is it. Great. I'm going to look to see if there is the chair that I was bound to. You see no indication of anything other than the table or the altar and this circular room. In the second vision, bound there. In the first one... He turns his attention back and forth to the two places you indicate. No, this is good. This is good. good. And you see the first time the man smiles, a half-cocked, almost cracking the skin around his face as this is not something he does a lot. And he smiles and he nods towards you. So... Shall we leave, Ruba? We just got here. Are we laying a trap? We are the trap, but not today. Uh, can we at least see if there's a body of this young girl? Or if it was now gone? I found the girl. And you're you right. I found her body. You were right, Ruva. She was innocent. And he begins to walk back down the hallway. So many mysterious people in this city of splendors. I'm just going to start muttering to myself, like, out of frustration. First, he asked me if she is innocent, but he knows she's innocent. Now we're not going to kill them, but we're here. (sighs) He stops and his back goes rigid again. And he turns around. And again, you see just the bottom third, bottom half of his face. No. Before we go any further, you must learn a few things. Come with me. I'm going to go after him. And so, as Ruva leaves with the realm's most infamous and perhaps deadliest assassin, you spend the next several days training with this man. Ruva, I would like you to take third level as you have earned it under the instruction of said assassin. And at this point, I'd like to bring in the rest of the group as we have some more story to tell here in the City of Splendors. Hi, guy. Hey. Oh, hello. What you been up to, (laughs) Ruva? Things and stuff and kind of... (laughs) No big deal. Yeah, just... (laughs) <laughs> doing some stuff, hitting third level with uh, some assassin, you know, just uh, doing my thing. <laughs> Hi! 
Just on the thing. Uh, we can do introductions, or you want to save them for outros, Will? Totally up to you. This is kind of a interesting. I'd say we just dive into it, like an hour in, right? We have a nice wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Let's do um, this thing. So what, <laughs> what I would like to do now for everyone is, if you would be so kind as we have Val, we have Edmure, and we have Graham on a mountaintop. And this mountaintop is the mountaintop that overlooks Waterdeep. There, seated upon a natural outcropping of stone, is a man known as Ironbender. He has given a cryptic message, as this group has been sent by none other than the Blackstaff Vajra to ascertain what this man has seen and what he has scried and divined for the City of Splendors. But upon reaching the top, I believe it was Val who turned towards the city, saw one of the many griffin riders shake, one of the griffins shake its rider, and as the rider plummeted, presumably to their death, the griffin, wild-eyed and in a state of absolute rage, descended upon the mountaintop. As the creature is off and on its way, I will allow everybody to... Give me one thing you would like to do before the creature reaches you as Val, Graham, and Edmure. I scream. Ah! What is that thing? This is how this is going to happen. It's going to kill us! Edmure, do something! Uh, okay, all right, all right, all right. Hold on. Uh, I, I grip my sword as if it was a baseball bat. Uh, and I try <laughs> to at least take a couple breaths and try to hone the training that Ruva taught me once or twice, maybe in passing before. So I try to get into a battle stance, one that doesn't look like a baseball player, but one that looks like someone who knows what they're doing with a sword. Yeah, I crack my knuckles. I, I assume a stance. And I uh, glance over at Ironbender. He's still standing there, yeah? And I say, want to help? I don't wait for an answer. I look right back at the beast. Yes, you see that Ironbender doesn't seem to either recognize what you've said or he doesn't respond to what you've said. As this is, uh, he continues his staring down into the depths of Waterdeep as if searching for something. Something just out of focus. So as you all prepare yourself, the creature lands among you, and those of you with a prepped action, I will allow you to make an attack first before we roll initiative, as the creature is not working with tactic skill or the mindset of a hunter, but simply carnal rage. Tell me what you want to do, kid. Everybody. Uh, I'm gonna cast a fireball at it. Ah! And it's a uh, 22. <laughs> damn it, Graham. <laughs> okay, uh, six fire damage. Oh, go ahead, more help! Just launch a fireball. Yeah, you, you seem <laughs> to have Launch a fucking fireball from my hair. <laughs> from my hand, rather than <laughs> my hair. That'd be bad. That'd be sweet. Who would like to do something else? What was that? How far out is this thing? It has landed among you, so you are, ah. you can easily get within melee with your normal movement speed. Uh, let's try to get you guys out of here. Oh, yeah, you should be able to drag us on. But spin, but spin. This is the best feature of Fantasy Grounds, by the way. <laughs> yeah. My personal favorite. It's just the spin. <laughs> I'm coming for you. Spin to win. Oh, man, spin to win. <laughs> Remember when I said I had figured it all out? Yeah, Greg posted to me just before yeah. the game that he knew exactly what he was doing with this stuff. <laughs> I got it! I said. I have it, everybody. Classic, Greg. I, I've got it all figured out. And I can't... 
I closed out something and I can't I, I can't open it again. I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> it's about it's right. Okay. Wait, Storytelling wait, wait. to Greg and that's it. I'm pretty this sure it's combat it. tracker, right? Yes, but I can't it won't open or some very bad. <laughs> Oh wait. no. Everyone wait. Everyone <laughs> Someone punch hey guys, it while Greg's you... doing this. We can Well what did All you right, guys get done this uh... session? Well we learned how to put uh images onto a map. Oh yeah? How long did it take you? Oh like three <laughs> hours. Like it wasn't yeah. <laughs> That's basic <laughs> comprehension for us. <laughs> we haven't talked in a while. I don't appreciate this. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, someone, someone punch this thing. Are you hitting it, Miff? There you go. I did nine. <laughs> I don't know if a nine's gonna hit. A nine does not hit. Surprising. Mm -hmm. And so that leaves Val. If Val would like to do something while I figure this all out. It does a 15 hit this boy? A 15 does hit this boy. Oh, you know, I might as well make a second Big attack boy. too. It's been a little while. It's absolute Yeah, unit. that's a 16. I'm gonna I'm gonna punch this guy twice, and that is gonna be da, 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 six plus eight, 14. 14 damage with two hits. Nice, fantastic, and we're going theater to mine. So, uh, <laughs> I, <it's laughs> made an executive I decision. <laughs> I did, and uh, you get to see the Griffin. There you go. Um, so as you guys all get into this position, I would like you to all now to roll some initiative as we see exactly what this thing's going to do to you or what you can do to it. Uh, 11. Okay. 15. And that's the only one I need. This music's epic. There it is. 20. Fantastic. So we're going to go Val. We're going to go Edmure. We're going to go Graham. And then we're going to go to Griffin. So Val, as soon as you're, you punch and are able to wreck it with 14 damage, as these punches kind of crunch into the light hollow bone beneath the feathery skin of this creature, you immediately realize that it's kind of rocks back this large beast giving you another opening what would you like to do my friend oh i could i could just keep punching it but that seems it seems so unfun it seems so thoughtless okay i am going to as it reels back i am going to try and leap up grab my hands into its uh feline fur on its back half and I'm going to try and grapple its wings to the to the back of its back. Okay. Do so this feline half have ho has hollow bones. You think it's just the bird well, half that has the hollow bones? Does it always want to eat itself? I have no idea. Let's uh <laughs> no, 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 no. I need to know. <laughs> what do you think? An athletics check? Athletics and the natural one, you are going to win, my friend, as you are able to get the hold in that you want as the creature begins to kind of spin and reach back as you are now in a position normally reserved for a rider. And Val, you're actually probably sliding a bit over the, the white scout seat that's on the back of the griffin that is still probably warm with the deceased person that has been thrown off or hopefully was remembering their ring of feather falling with them. Um, and as you're holding into place, that gives Edmure advantage on any attack as this creature seems preoccupied. Another Wait, executive decision. Am I up? You are. Sweet. Uh, I'm going uh, to I'm gonna rear back if that first swing missed. I'm going to take a step back and try to uh, focus as much as I can and go for a thrust. Uh, into the creature uh, with a 10. Uh, 10's huh? not going to do it as you get to roll oh, with advantage, advantage. You said, right? Yep. Nice. How about a 14? There it is. A 14 does hit. So please roll me some damage. Some damage. Adorable. Uh, the and damage. 
All right. And remember right. that you are able to have special abilities with the sword that you now possess, Edmure, as you can, I believe it is a one for one point bleed from you into additional damage if you would like. So, Boy. right. Right. I don't know if I want to do that yet. Uh, I'm going to mark the target as I strike this. Uh, I won't do the mark damage yet, but I'll do it as if I as I hit it. I'm going to mark it so I get the marked bonus next time. Uh, for a... Because it just doesn't make sense otherwise. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a one of these for... N oh, never mind. That's a one. I thought that was nine. Three damage instead. But also marking the target. Excellent. The target is dealt three damage oh, and uh, marked. Yep. 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 And as Edmure goes in with the abilities given and gifted by the blade and those by the absent Ruva, you are able to find purchase as you skitter across the hollow, not hollow, bones of the uh, feline back of the area just below Val's position. As we go to Graham, Graham, your friends have engaged. What would you like to do? Oh, I'm stressed. I'm going to use a, a fireball because my cantrips are OP. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, 18 to hit for um, ba, ba, ba. some reason it rolled crit damage. It didn't roll a critical hit though, right? We will take five. Dead. I'm good with five. Take five. All right. So five. Fuck it. Okay. Look out on Glidma! <laughs> so, just as Val kind of Cooking moved around the way of the, the coral blade that cut beneath, uh, Edmure, you duck a bit as a firebolt, uh, courtesy of Graham, skitters over your right shoulder, blasting very close to Val's position as well, as the creature is taking a massive amount of damage, as it hasn't had a chance to do anything until now, as it swipes at Edmure in front of it. With a nat 20! Nat 20, guys. Oh, sweet. <laughs> it's so weak. I'll allow it. Sweet. That happens. I'll allow it. Okay, so that is going to be... That is 10 piercing damage. And awful. it is going to attempt to... It's going to attempt to reach back and bite the... Um, person on its back. Get on! Bring it on! And that is going to be a five damage. So with five slashing and piercing, as the two of you, it rips and bites and rips and bites. We go back to the top of the order, Val, as this creature is fighting with a ferociousness that you haven't seen with these griffins. They're obviously animalistic and creatures of the wild, but Domesticated after years of training, this creature is anything but trained. It is furious. It is primal. Oh boy, I've got its wings pulled back. I'm, I've still got that that grip around it. Yeah. Yes, it has not tried to shake you. You still have it, and it's kind of reaching back and was able to kind of grab your leg, as almost like a horse biting. Um, but it wasn't able to, it can't fly. You have it, you can feel it's kind of flex beneath you, but it hasn't actively tried to shape you. It's used its turn trying to hurt you. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of perched on its back right now. I've got the flats of my feet on its haunches and I'm kind of, I'm kind of hunched over holding onto its wings like this. I am going to try to keep my grip let me know if this if what i'm trying to do means i lose my grip i'm going to try and keep my grip and stand upright and take a step forward towards its head i'm going to lift my right foot up and just try and slam the my right heel down on the top of its head oh that's absolutely yeah you're able to hold on to the wing negotiating around kind of keeping a mule kick back. So right ahead, yeah. Cool, that's a, that's a 14 to hit. That will hit, sir. Let's do this. Five damage to this thing. 
do believe that is my turn. Yep, as it gets kicked in the back and you maintain your grip, you can feel it kind of shift and slip a bit as it feels wobbly beneath you for a moment, but it quickly kind of does the equivalent of a head shake as it refocuses in time for Ed Muir to do something. Perfect. Uh, now yeah, that it's marked, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. Uh, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and uh, yeah, do some swipey stuff. Uh, the, that, that looks like a 24. Is it? It That's is. Gonna sweet. 24? Yeah. All right. Sweet. Uh, for damage. Uh, 1d10. Uh, d4. Plus 3. So, uh, 15. Nice. So, with 15 as you slice into this creature, I will again tell you, Edmir, that you feel the power that's going through your um, your, bo- your your sword as it's almost craving. It's an addiction, much like your own, as it wishes to drink deeper of the creature. Do you wish to activate the ability of this blade? Yeah, I shouldn't but it's an addiction, and you know me, I'm an addict, so I'm going to actually keep the sword there uh, for a little longer and let the sword drink in and actually transfer to... Uh... Oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to take two health, and then I gain two health? Is that, it's like a leechy thing? Not like the you fruit, can, but like a leech? You can elect to add as much of your health points into damage as you wish. So if you want to do 10, you can do 10. If you want to do 15, you can do 15. You'll lose the hit points, and it'll be added to your damage bonus. So like leeches right. your health. Okay, so it's not a health. leech. It's a reserve. It's a re- okay, perfect. Yeah, so it's not as good as I thought. All right, so uh, I will do two damage, <laughs> uh, and reducing myself to hit points, which is scary because I have only eight left. So yeah, I'll do that. Ah, you didn't. Okay, so exactly. with right. the... Uh, a feeling that is akin to the snoot of the drugs that you so crave. As this life force leeches from you, it is a feeling not of pain but of ecstasy, Edmure, as this is something you could definitely get on board with. Graham, what would you like to do as your friends drug. are pummeling the beast? Yep. <laughs> um, I gotta keep keep on going. I get further and further away as I start cooking this chicken with firebolts, um, just just over and over. I'm trying to get like a round roast on it rather than like crisping up too much side. So I'm gonna sort of circle around as I uh, as I do this. Uh, however, I rolled a natural one uh, and probably burn my hand in the doing so. Nailed it. Uh, ah! This one kind of. This one kind of, as you're moving, you shift and fire, and without looking away from the city, Ironbender ducks just as it goes over his head. Uh, he didn't recognize or see it coming, but ducked regardless, uh, keeping you from an embarrassing attack. Sorry! Conference. Sorry, Ironbender! Um, as the creature comes forward, it is going to again try to bite at the person on its back with a nat 20 as that's the second one second one fuck no ah it's okay so only two damage plus five is seven to val as the creature i want to contract around. mad griffin disease <laughs> <laughs> you suddenly have a craving for large dock rodents you have no idea why <laughs> um, mm. um, and <sighs> the, it is going to try to shake Val with a strength check. So with a 15 plus blue blue blue, uh, it's going to be a 19 for the griffin if you want to try to hold on to this. <laughs> no way, baby. <laughs> so in the battle of man versus beast, uh, you see the shake and the win as half orc beats the beast. As we go back up to the top, Val, you feel this thing is weak beneath you, but violence of nature is violence pure, and this creature is still fighting with everything it has, but a lot of what it is is lying on the ground or burned by 
Graham. Yeah, um, I am. I am bloodied. I am. I am hurt. I've got this big old gash where the uh, Griffin's beak tore through the cloth and the skin of my right shoulder, uh, and I let out a, a yelp and I stumble backwards. I let go of its wings. And I'm going to spend my natural 20 that I've been hanging on to for like four episodes now. And I am going to swing around this griffin's neck and I'm going to try and, I don't know, like, like suplex it into the ground with my critical hit. You're going to suplex a griffin? <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> I, it All right. Somebody, it, I, I wish it's I could draw. That's all I wish. Right. That's five plus eight is 13 damage to it. And as it had nine hit points left with the suplex that drives this majestic or formerly majestic creature into the rock of Mount Waterdeep, it drops. There is a crunch of hollow bone as it cracks and stays very still. The last of its breath escaping into the cool wind. Thou, you pick yourself up, and you have just oh. suplexed a fucking griffin. Holy moly! Oh Holy that, shit! That's Sorry. Brad held it once again. I'm Holy moly. very dizzy. Holy tense. Here, wait. Uh, and I'm gonna stumble towards Graham, and I'm gonna just say, Graham, help, and I'm gonna collapse halfway onto his yeah. shoulder. I'm just going to try and support myself. <laughs> I'll cast <laughs> wounds on him quickly. Quick, quick, uh, <laughs> Phil, feel a little bit better. <laughs> Edmer still carves into the beast, trying to, trying to get that feeling that he felt moments ago, that moment of ecstasy, that new high that he hasn't helped, felt before as he's still oh, carving sick. into the corpse. Yark, yark, hark, yark. Shit. <laughs> he starts sawing at it. It's really gross. Um, oh, Uncle Edmer is uh, dead. It, it's dead already. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, I know. It's, um... it's okay. Uh, that kind of like Valley... Blanken from uh, Men in Tights. When he's like on the pole <laughs> and he's just carving it up. <laughs> it's pretty much what he's doing. What was what was that full healing there, uh, Graham? Three uh, plus it is something. Three uh, plus, yeah, math. Uh, what's it? My intelligence? Um... Plus four, so seven total. Seven. Okay, still a little hurt, but a lot better. How's everyone? Everyone good? Yeah, that everyone. Uh, Val's yeah, kind of hurt. Um, hey, Mister, and I turn to this iron bro. You, you didn't exactly help us back, back, back there with the, with the, the, the big, big bird, you know, and it's, it's kind of mad at you now. So Can't really show I knew Graham. <laughs> Except I, uh, Graham, you would hear as everyone else would, but you would hear drift along the wind from barely parted lips of Ironbender. I knew you would win. What? Did you send that? F- did, did you did you send that thing after us? Is that your? Was that your pet? Did I? Did we just kill your pet? I throw a rock at Ironbender. <laughs> He ducks it much like he ducks me. <laughs> He's fucking stoner, man. Yeah, I'm too weak to stop <laughs> that. <laughs> I'll go ahead, but uh, it, it, did did you, Mister Bender? I believe him. I believe him. Mister I, Mister Iron Bender. Sir, Sir, Sir Bender. You guys see, <laughs> you see Iron Bender, sort of uncurl his legs from beneath him as he stands up an old man atop this natural stone fixture on the highest point overlooking the city of splendors and he lightly down as he pads over he's smaller maybe only five 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 six as he pads over to you all looks at the creature looks around and again as he sees you all he reminds you of what he had said before and in each of your minds augmented by sound beyond what would be available here on the 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 wind and the whipping as you see his mouth just barely part you hear 
One of many, but there is one more that pretends to be three. This one is unseen. Yeah. And then he looks at Graham and says, no, the griffin wasn't mine. Oh, okay, that makes me feel better. It wasn't mine either. Just so we don't know, it's not mine. One of many, but this one pretends to be three. I don't know what that means. I'm sure it's nothing. It's probably nothing. Someone saying that one puzzles. is pretending to be three people, but they're one of many. This is too much for me. I think they're on the If only River was here. She's really good at puzzles. I'm not really good at them. Well, and this is a good time as the, everyone on top of Mount Waterdeep is gathering yourselves up the griffin getting colder and not older uh ironbender slowly returns to his position staring at the city you are all reminded of the quest that sent you here as blackstaff vajra basically said to talk to this man but in return and response for talking to this man she was to help with something else as we cut back to London's fog and the room of Morwen. Vajra is standing over the comatose form of the Triton and as she is gesturing and as she is muttering, casting dust and grabbing at charms and bits of mercury Growing up out of place, runes, creating a haven, if you will. She begins to awaken the Triton. But, Morwen, mm -hmm. all you remember is that you met eyes with a creature with tentacled beard, squid and emotionless black eyes, and you are still there. And as you look around in the sewers beneath Waterdeep, you do not see your friends. You are alone. And the only person that is there is the creature with the squid beard and the eyes that show no mercy. And it cocks its head. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna start taking steps backwards. Where, where, where did ev everyone go? What, what, what have, what have you done to them? Where, where, did, where did they go? I've done nothing to them. They were they were here right I don't I don't understand I oh, I um and I'm gonna I'm gonna draw my scimitar um but my arm's clearly like shaking I'm I'm clearly very unsettled by by this this entire sort of turn of events um bring bring them back I didn't Send them away. You did. No, I... No, you, you must have done it. I... I... You, you... You must have done that. I, I didn't... I can't... I... Um, and sort of, I'm going to break eye contact um, and start looking around and shouting um, for for Val and and for Graham um, and for Uncle Edmund, um, just just as loudly as I can. They cannot hear you where they are. Where did they go? 
Wait, where did they go? Where did they go? You must know. Where did they go? And in a very human gesture, the creature shrugs. Then, then it's then then it's me and you. Who are you? My name is Yellow. Yours is Morwen. Morwen, the runner. Morwen, who abandoned the people. No, I. No. No, I. I. They, they're okay. I. I didn't. You can't abandon something that doesn't need you. I. We. You. We. No! No! You took my friends! Where. Where did you put them? Where did they go? I put them nowhere. You put your friends away. I did no such thing. They were here. And you must have taken them. There was the chair and the... I... And the, uh, I was going to make a... Uh, I was gonna, uh, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast fog clouds in between me and um, and and my my squiddy friend O'Neill. Go right ahead. And as the fog begins to swirl, and I explained this last time, but I would like you to explain the fog cloud of Morwen the Triton as. I dare say somebody born of the sea might create a fog cloud slightly different than someone that has never seen a wave. What does it look like? Um, So this fog cloud rises from the ground ever so slowly before suddenly it crashes from one side to the other. It... I imagine normally with fog clouds, you see them creep up from the ground and just slowly fill. This one creeps up from the ground and then suddenly sways and just crashes down as a big wave moves from left to right. Um, This fog almost acts as as water. It it chokes as it crashes. You can almost sort of feel it in the air as suddenly there's pressure moving from one side of the room to the other. Um, It's quite violent in nature. Um, and it, it might be that this is how Triton fog clouds are, or it might be that she's just that upset, I guess. That's fantastic. An emotional response yeah, based is. off of the situation. Yeah, or simply the Tempest version of a uh, fog cloud as it crashes over the creature known as Nihilor. And as it turns and looks at the emergence of this fog, it rises up much more like liquid than gas, burying, drowning the creature among its embrace. But more when as soon as it creeps past and you see this wave very much like the ocean, its movements, its ebbs, it flows, its currents beneath the surface. There in the white opaqueness, you see other titans shadows darker than would be visible in just the with the naked eye but they begin to gather against the backdrop almost a a screen of a theater silhouettes marked and without knowing or being able to distinguish figures or characteristics, you know they are the members of your village. Why did you leave us, Morwin? No, I... You, you were fine, we, we did it, and I... I thought I could do more, and I, I came away so that I could do more. We, 
Wait. I. 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 I don't know. Please, please, please don't know. I. You That's see. Not real. No. You see one of the silhouettes lie down and vanish among among the fog. And then another one lies down and vanishes among the, the fog. And a small child or a smaller triton lies down. Its shadow and silhouette vanishes into your fog. No. No. I'm I... so sick, Mom. Oh, you got better. You all got better. You all got better. I fixed you. Oh, you all got better. Please, I... I'm going to start, like, trying to grab at them. I'm going to reach into the fog feel... and try and stop them from lying down. As you reach and your fingers pass into the fog, much like fingers grasping at a fish beneath the surface of a river, parts and ripples your fog cloud more liquid than gas causing ripples against the backdrop of your village silhouettes and they continue to fall and lie down I need to find you. No. no 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 this 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 isn't right this can't be right i left them all okay val 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 you must be here graham edmund i please Please, Rova! Please, no, I, I left you, okay? This can't... You can't be here, that's not right. That's not how this happened, it's not right. The silhouettes continue to fall, kneel, and drop. And just as you are screaming all this, Morwen, the fog itself splits and you see tentacles reach out of the end of the opaque wall you've created as Nihilor's face breaches through the fog cloud and in your mind you hear your friends are gone as are your people It can't be. I, I I left them fine. Have you never? You, you must know about Triton. You must you must know about Triton. You understand how we're we're we're. Please. He cocks his head. Then why do they look for you? Send people for you. Because we don't leave. None of us leave. If something happens to one of us, we worry. There's nothing odd. There's nothing going on. I saved those people. And now I'm going to save everyone else. Now I'm going to make sure that Triton are marked in history. So, out of pure desperation, is, is, is he particularly far from me? Are they particularly He's, far from me? They're like right in your face. At awesome. this point, if it could, it would touch your face. In fact, they're getting close as these tendrils, almost in a excitement, are writhing and flopping and getting dangerously close to brushing your jaw. Cool, I'm gonna scream at it and like hurl my scimitar through it somehow. I without without any form of finesse, I'm gonna grab it with two hands and I'm gonna bring it down diagonally ac across him in in whatever whatever way I can. 
Roll me an attack. Cool. Uh, ba, 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 plus two. Da, 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 da. It's gonna go well. Fifteen! Your scimitar, the one that you traded Rainier Never Ember for, the very fine blade that's in your grasp, weighted perfectly, silvered on the edge, (laughs) cuts through in a diagonal the creature of you, but he moves like the wave that you created with your fog. His visage ripples, as do his tentacles, as if someone dropped a pebble to pull. You are a creature of violence. You hide your hate behind song and smile. I look forward to eating your mind. And Morwen. You begin to feel yourself sink into the floor of this stone space as the creature known as Nihilor looks around. It's emotionless, expressionless eyes casting a puzzled gaze. And perhaps your affinity with the sea and the creatures that dwell in it give you a gleaning moment of how those eyes can convey such feelings. But seems confused by your descent and it leans forward almost comically its long arms on its knees as it tries to follow you into the floor you're being tricked the one that you sought wasn't the one and the last of the words trail off as you are drug into the floor the stone creeping up around your face as the ocean water did at your home. You slip beneath the stony surface and you (sighs) come awake in a bed in London's fog, a stranger standing over you with a glowing black staff in her hand. Nah! Mm. There you are. God, you're not made of tentacles. No, I'm not. Uh, oh, can I, can I hug you, please, friend who is not made uh, of tentacles? Are you, are you uh, gonna, are uh, you going uh, to kill if me? We didn't hug. No, I, no. Okay, then you have to no. hug me. I'm so sorry. They were tentacles so close to my face, and they weren't friendly. Please hug me. I'm gonna, she, she, like, she does not up. move towards you. <laughs> just ball she, up and throw myself you feel, in this figure. You feel an incredibly stiff figure beneath you that's not responding to this emotional outburst, but there is an almost pet-like pat on your head as there, there. Did you drag me through the floor? Oh, you dragged me through the floor. I have never been so grateful to be drowned by floor. Oh. This is why I'm not a priest. Um, you're fine. You're going to make it. Go get more. What? I don't know. I was just supposed to wake you up. You seem to be okay. So she gathers herself to leave. No, 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 no. Who are you? What? Do I? Do I know you? Please. I'm your friends. I'm here. Your friends. I've done something for me. Waking you up was my repayment to them. So. Just wait a second, um, and I'm gonna grab uh, some. I should have some paper and things in in my pack. Um, 
I've just closed my character sheet because I'm an idiot. So bear with me. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna really quickly. I will grab... still you have paper. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly grab a, a drawing a drawing um, utensil out of my bag and some paper, and I'm gonna start scribbling down what what this person looks like. And I'm, I'm uh, what's your name? I I need to remember you. I need to record you. My name is Vajra. Huh? I'm the black staff of Waterdeep. Okay. It's fine. I'm just no, no, a please, friend please, of your friends. Please. Yes? And I need to record it. You you look like this. Um and she holds up like a quick sketch of what what this character looks like from sort of here. You you look like this, right? Roll me a uh let's do a performance check. I'm really tempted to use one at 20 on something completely useless. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think it's the best. Yeah, no, we'll use the we'll use my nat twenty. Great. Do I get a thingy? I must do. I must get a plus two in performance. I'm a bard, of course I must. Let me let me check my sheet if I can ever find it. Well, with a nat twenty, you get the best possible. If you use oh, it, you it's go. the best possible outcome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so you see Vajra is kind of inching towards the door of your room at London's Fog, and as soon as you produce a sketch that you've drawn in maybe 30 seconds she stops and she goes oh my god how did you normally i draw maps but angles are really simple and shadows and i like shadows she looks at it and the lighting in here is it's fantastic and she okay, reaches but... down to kind of help you up from the bedside where you have presumably sat to draw or it, it, um yes this is wonderful uh, yeah uh, Vajra Blackstaff this is perfect mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping as she to looks at the and what we do and maybe get get some information jot it down too so that if I forget nobody else will And for a moment, this academic, this stoic woman looks at you and you see a, almost like a wave of your fog of concern brushes past her young features. What do you wish to remember, Morwen? That would re um, require your drawings? No, I just, I want to make sure that when I come to tell people about things, that I can do it accurately. And, you know, if if I if I, I don't die, it's an adventure and I live for a long time, and then I've always got a, a history of it. Right? Old fish forget. She cocks her head and looks at you. I'm glad that you woke up, Morwen. And she looks at the picture that you've drawn for her and says, And if you tell a tale half as well as you can draw in half minutes time, I dare say Mr. Volo is in quite the pickle. I mean, I sing better than a tell a tale, but I mean, it's all the same thing. In the I should find my friends. Do you know where my friends are? The, the, the squid man sent them away, and he said squid it was man. me, but it wasn't me. It can't have been me. I'm useless. No, I don't think you're useless. Come with me, and she offers you her arm. Yeah, I, I take it. She lit hallway, takes you forward, you open the main door and you hear the slight noise. It's not a tavern or an inn or a bar. Um, as London's fog is quiet, it's usually reserved academics. There's a few university students that are sitting doing their work. And as you walk into the room, Gordon, who is behind the bar, turns his yellow shirt cuffed up and he sees you and says, Hey, you're awake. Hey. Oh, it's good to see you. Oh. It's good to see you too. 
you want can i get you something to eat something to drink he looks at vajra something to eat something she just waves him off have, have you seen my friends my cat oh yeah um and he puts his fingers in his lips and roll perception check for me oh okie doke well then there was that 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 was a nat 20 but i don't think it's coming up in the chat that's it it was a nat 20 and i see it yep oh good okay i i don't see it because my internet's being pooped i'm so sorry it's okay um if there's anybody that knows about poop internet it's the person that you're currently conversing with um <laughs> so as as you see gordon go to put his hands or his fingers in his mouth to whistle you notice that his pinky finger and his index finger dip below and pass through his bottom lip. And when you hear the whistle, because of your affinity with music and song, the whistle comes from a space maybe two feet to the left of Gordon. You have to teach me how to do that at some point. He turns and looks at you <laughs> to teach you how to do what? And at that point, you see Lucifer pound into the area. In fact, coming from behind the bar in the area in the back, you simply see the tuft of ears and the long black and white tail that comes in. And there is a leap as every university student in the place turns, gasps, and feigns the passion of indignation that only university students can at being interrupted as the cat lands on you and with you and immediately starts just but to you you hear oh my god i thought you were dead oh my god i thought you were dead and it was just over and over again so uh in amongst all the you can also hear, oh my god, I thought I was dead. Oh my god, I thought I was dead. Oh my god, in the floor eating me. Oh my god, and I thought I was dead. Um, which You slept a long you know, time. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Look, we have to find the others. Do you know where they are? Nope. Good. Hey, do you know where my friends are? Because the cat doesn't know. Uh, Gordon looks at the cat, looks at you, looks at the cat, looks at you. As Vajra, you feel a hand on your shoulder as the woman that woke you up in your room says, I sent them up the mountain. And she kind of points out, and in the dying light, you can see the large, looming, kind of single-peaked spire of Mount Waterdeep. They did me a favor, and I repaid my debt. So, um, I shall wait here for them. I'm sure they will be along directly. Uh, do, do you mind? Do, do you mind if I go ahead? I'm a bit, I'm a bit worried. I'm frightened that I did something to them. You want to go meet them? Yeah. Just to check they're okay. I... I'm, I'm, wor I'm worried I did something. You should be fine. Does someone want to go with? You? I can go with you if you want uh, to. Lu Lucifer can come with me. It's fine. Just point me in the right direction. I'm sure we'll find them. Okay. She simply indicates the, the peak of the mountain. Yeah, that's probably they close they enough. They should be on their way. Hey, cat! You want to go up a mountain? Nope. But I'll go with you. <sighs> okay. You're going to try that, but instead be enthusiastic about going up the mountain, because I don't really want to go up the mountain either, but I have to fix the thing I did wrong. You see Lucifer's large eyes kind of look up into the left corner. I'd yeah. love to go up a mountain. Yeah, you would. All right, let's go. <laughs> he walks out, but the tail's low as... The voice and the enthusiasm do not carry over into the independent appendage that is whisk whisking about behind him or would be if he were excited. Just kind of like a question mark as he walks out. Just, just as I Let's walk cut alongside, back. I'm going to ca just carry on singing like, I understand cat body language. I understand cat body language. Just as, as we And go. he says back, I thought I made myself clear. I didn't want to go, but you made <laughs> say something else. 
So as you walk out into the city streets, you and your friend Lucifer, the cold wind of Iliant, the month of autumn begins to blow through. Um, but you are awake, Morwen. You have a bit of a information download given to you, and you can't help but think that there was something that that creature was trying to tell you that didn't make it through to you before you were brought back by Vajra. And so as you walk towards the large mount of Waterdeep, we are going to cut back to Ruva. Ruva, you are down at the docks. You are standing on one of the empty piers, one that's kind of half deconstructed for refurbishment, as the man that you have known for the last several days, your teacher, Artemis, stands his hood down as he looks out into the blowing gales coming from the Sea of Swords, and he turns back to you. I guess it's time you get back to your friends, huh? I suppose. We had such good times, though, Artemis. He cocks a head and raises an eyebrow, thinking of the graining that you have done in the past couple days. You have an interesting definition of good times. <laughs> you should see what my clan thinks. It'd make your skin crawl. Or whatever little furs you have on you. <laughs> uh, we shall meet again? Perhaps? Perhaps. If I need you, I know where to find you. He and will. he begins to walk past you, and he looks up at you, Ruva, and... Though he does nothing to initiate any type of physical contact, because of your relationship with this man, being around him for the past several days, you can tell that there's a drag a bit on his emotional state as perhaps there's a touch of hesitancy to return to the shadows by himself. But... There is no pat, no warrior's grasp, no nod of encouragement or acceptance. But there is a pause. And he continues past as his footsteps do not creak across the loose boards of the dock, but in the wind whispered back against the gale of the Sea of Storms, somehow the man fighting nature itself, you hear him respond. We will meet again, Ruva. And as the wind wisps, so does Artemis and Trary leave. <sighs> well, I could use a drink. I'm going to take my ukulele out and start playing on the way back to, uh, to the, what is it called? Sorry, why am I blanking? London's Fog. The London's Fog. That is right. Yes, I'm just going to play. Uh, those things just go go around. Just... <laughs> just on my way out. Roll a performance check for me. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, performance. It's probably not not great. <laughs> yeah, it's a. <laughs> To do. <laughs> As you are walking off the docks and strumming, uh, um, get a couple people that just like shrilly, they, they, they kind of tense as a couple of the notes are a bit off, but it just so happens that a pack of drunken pirates, or excuse me, excuse me, sailors walk past. And as these sailors who are absolutely reputable and in by no means engaged in buccaneer or piracy or bring into activity they hear you playing a song that they like a bit and they circle around you and much like uh somebody walking through the caribbean or uh through the bahamas as you would 
stroll with a jug of rum. You are accompanied by five of these surly, decidedly, I'm not, not a full set of teeth among them, uh, probably all of them. Um, and as you go back towards London's fog, you have a litany and chorus of reputable sailors singing shanties along with you. Of course, the shanties have nothing to do with what you're playing, but that's okay. As the shanties continue up through the City of Splendors, and Ruva, you return to London's Fog. We will cut then back to our guys as we have both Val, Graham, or Val, Graham, and Edmure descending from Mount Waterdeep. And we will say, as happenstance occurs in tales told and woven by fate and legend, you run into a Triton girl named Morwen and her fateful, if reluctant, cat, Lucifer. Well, it looks just like Morwen up there, guys. Hey! That could be like a like a sister or something, or hey! like a cousin. Oh, oh! hey, hello. Oh! Is that no Morwen's asleep? That can't be Morwen, right? No, she's asleep. No, I think that is right? her. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, cool. I, I run over. Hey, Morwen! I give her a big hug. Hi. Oh, hey. Okay. Hey. Oh, yeah, hey. no, I just almost got eaten by a big bird. It was, it was a whole thing. A big bird? Yeah. Yeah, and there was this guy who was like bending iron, but he never did actually... He was called Iron Bender, but he never really did anything of iron. Um, and there was this lady with a black staff. She sent us off over here, and she said she'd look after you. Did she heal you? I think so. I feel better. I'm awake, at least. And as you're talking, I'm, like, patting you down Ooh. and turning you around to check that you're, like, actually there. Hey! Yeah, you've gone you from comatose to chipper very quickly. <laughs> no, How are you I... feeling? Uh... Uh, I feel like, uh, like shit is probably the apt, uh, phrase, oh, but, 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 oh, you too, do you need some <clears throat> more shoes? Maybe we can go get shoes together, maybe that. I found, idea. I, you know, I found something better than shoes. <laughs> it sucks. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Um, yeah, no, I, um... Can I ask what happened, or are we not? Because the Squidman Joel. said I sent you all away. Squidman? Oh, the Squidman who like attacks you and then you disappeared and we tried to find you in the sewers, but then you all went and then and so was Ruva and it was a whole thing. Yeah, no, maybe. I don't Ruva. know. He, um, you find said I sent you away, and you know I'd never do that, right? Yeah, no. No, I, I thought like he just he stole you. That's what I thought. Oh, well, that's good. So he stole me and made me feel miserable, and then the floor ate me, huh? Pretty much. That's that's what we saw at least. Well, what, what is it? What were you doing with the squid man? He looked like he was mean. Yeah, he said that my people are trying to find me, um, and that maybe it's my. Well, that's fault. good. If anything happens to them, it's my fault because I'm not there. Hmm. You think so, that's true? Well, that's awful. I, I don't think I, that's I'm true. I don't think it can be. I'm, uh, I mean, there was nothing wrong with them when I left. So. I'm sure they're fine. Mm, try I mean, I haven't, seen, I haven't seen my parents in a long time, and, and they never write. But mm. I'm sure they're fine. I don't try worry about them. Really great. Try and always Should I be worrying about them? No. I should be worrying about them. No. Oh god, what if something bad happens no. to them? It'd be my fault. Mm, I tell you what, let's let's go back to London's Fog and I'll sing you a song about how you shouldn't worry about your parents. Okay. I, I feel like I should parents. write my, my parents. Now right? that's a song I can drink to. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's, let's, let's head go back. back. I've got going. a heart problem. What's so. he doing? Songs he? And, uh, what? Gordon, remember him? Morwen. Yeah, that, oh. That, that, that. oh, yeah, no, he's fine. He's good. Um, he's right. he's still doing weird shit. But... 
Here. No, Here. lovely. Good, good egg. And and good egg. Okay, but not like creepy like a weirdo. Creepy like... <laughs> creepy. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's good, I think. That's always... That's always Imagine good. if something bad had happened to Gordon while we've been gone. Oh my God, no, right. everything is go. fine with Come on, come on. Okay, yeah. Let's go. Alright, 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 Oh, look! I drew a picture! Look at my picture! And I'm gonna make sure that everybody sees my picture that I drawed. Look! Brady, you know, that's a big mood. Yeah. That's a big mood as an artist. <laughs> I should have put saying. that in my gallery. Look! I drawed- I drawed the late- the-, the, the I- look after me. Warwin, it's like you've captured her likeness perfectly. Did you- How did you do this? It looks nothing like me. <laughs> I feel it's like a black put... star, Edma. I feel, I feel. Oh like yeah, oh yeah, not... oh yeah. What a honey! The, the lady that sent us off on the quest, yeah. I feel like yeah. I put a bit of my soul into this one, and I wanna, I wanna draw to you guys as well. I, I think that would be great. We could draw together. Oh. I wanna, I wanna like make sure that. Crits, yeah. Mm. I'd be honored. I wanna make sure that everybody remembers us. You know. I'm gonna write you a piece of history, etc. Cool. That's really profound. And I'm Maybe gonna make sure to write about your cool. shoes. Now let's go. Come on. Where's Ruva? Is Ruva still gone? I thought she might have been back. Come back here by now. We 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 haven't seen her in a little while. Hmm. Maybe she's back at London Fog. We should go ask Gordon about his cool whistling trick. Good idea. I'm gonna cool. write about that too. Whistling trick. Mm. So as you all turn uh, around to go back to London's fog, uh, Lucifer looks up at you, Morwen, and goes, "So no mountain? No, no mountain. You're safe." And the tail goes up and begins to radically, independently wave around in animated joy as the cat pads back towards London's fog and the white water it likes so much. And as you all return to the area, the place that you now own, formerly Trollskull Manor, and now London's fog, Vajra Blackstaff is waiting for you, and so is Ruva. Ruva! Ruva! Hey! Oh. Hi, Ruva. Hello. How did you get back here? You're, you're all together. Back here now. Yeah. Uh, to We're be here, fair, right? I only just got back here. I was in a coma forced by a squid man. I fell through the floor. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, you were what? <laughs> I, I was... I, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna I, like, go over, like, pick her up by the head and just shake her and just be like, you're awake now, right? Yes! She does. Not sleep walking. <laughs> she does. Yeah. Just wring her neck. <laughs> I'm just gonna you know, like lift her up and like check her all over, make sure she's okay, like set her down. Ruba, Ruba, I made a drawing. Ruba, Ruba, made a drawing. Yes. Okay. Let, let, hold on. Hold on. Let, let me see drawing small fish woman, and then okay, we yeah. talk. Okay. So I fell through the floor. It was really scary. All of my people might be dead because of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could I get a drink for this one? <laughs> Yeah, you see, instead of grabbing coffee, tea, or anything like that, it's immediately back, and there is just an array of, like, whiskey as he just begins to, like, pick through the liquor and kind of <laughs> moving hands back until you indicate that he should stop, Ruva. That's going This, all, all of them. All of them, please. He just... Roll a perception check for me, Ruva. <laughs> okay. Uh... Gordon is really fast in getting these bottles down. As you just see, bottles begin to appear in front of him on the bar. Quickly, there's a glass produced, glass for anybody ready to drink. And during this exchange, Vajra Blackstaff comes over and pulls aside Val and Graham and Edmir. Your friend has returned. That's promised. Indeed she is. What have you found for me? 
Oh, uh, we found a big, uh, big, big chicken griffin thing, and we killed it. Griffin, griffin. Um, and, and the Iron Bender guy was there, and he had this big, um, you know, puzzle that we're working on. Riddle. It was a riddle. Riddle. Kind of a riddle, yeah. Kind of riddle. He what wasn't working on like an object, a puddle. It was like a statement that we couldn't quite figure out. Very cryptic. I understand. What did he say? <sighs> Nothing really important. It was more like there was a griffin rider that um, uh, tried to buck their um, their rider off and then uh, swoop us. But we uh, we fought him. We fought him and, uh, yep. and then we came back down because we were all pretty beat up. <laughs> another round, another round, Gordon. And everybody Gordon just got their rounds. Right. He, so but regardless, you're an owner now. Yeah, you're you're an owner now, Edmir, so another. He, uh, she turns towards Graham and Val, kind of away from Edmure a bit. What did the man say? Do you remember the exact words, Graham? Uh, one hides in S3? Something like that? It was just Something a, bit like of, a bit of a big day. Me. One of many, but this one is three. It's not the exact words, but it was something like that. One who pretends to be three. This one is unseen. It sounded like this that. This one is yeah. unseen. Yes. That that last part seemed significant. This one is unseen. Edmure Graham a load of and Val roll, in, roll insight checks for me. Ooh, uh. Is that me too? Total, total of twenty. Yes, you. Yeah, uh, Edmure and uh, Graham. I will also take insight checks from. 14. Sixteen. Graham and Val, you both, and then a beat or two later, Edmure, you pick up on this as well. You see Naturally. the yeah, the young visage of the Blackstaff Vajra crack for a moment at the mention of the word unseen and you see her almost as if a weight gets dropped onto her young shoulders and she looks from side to side thank you um that means something me. to you? so, so I, I, I say this I just a moment ago said it's all a load of nonsense to me, and I look down, and I glance up, uh, sort of the you know Kubrick look from underneath my brow at uh, Vajra. She looks furtively back and forth, and I say, "But it looks like it's not a lot of nonsense to you." It is not nonsense. I shall be in touch. This is not the end of our dealings. Enjoy your evening Let and your reunion. Lady Blackstaff, are we in danger? No more so than the city. I look to Graham and I say, somehow that doesn't really reassure me. No, not at all. That's, that's mysterious right there. Cryptic, even. Oh. Man, um, how did we fall in with people who only talk in riddles? Right? Kind gesture. Ridiculous. Thank you, Arctic Flat. I'll take a look in a second, buddy. I, I mean... <sighs> Mrs. Blackstaff, um, you know, I feel like you kind of owe us maybe a little bit of an explanation here. We, we went up a mountain and we fought a, a giant chicken for you, and then a man gave you that's this, this riddle, and it seems to mean something to you, so, you know, it would be kind of helpful for us if we knew what that, what that was, you know? Roll persuasion check. Oh! Come on, Graham. Oh, shit. <laughs> An unnatural. <laughs> um, <laughs> she smiles and... 
a, a hollow smile. Just enjoy your reunion. This is the matters of state. It's none of your concern. I will be in touch. You are all. I help you. You'll be fine. She moves towards the door. That doesn't make me feel fine. Thank you. She just waves behind her. She's kind of pressed okay. now. Her staff not touching the ground as she walks. It's held almost oblong in her grasp as she just strides through the door and enters back into her city. Was that? Oh, she woke me up from my coma. I think she pulled me through the floor. Is she a friend? Did she put you in coma? No, 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 no. The squid man put me in a coma. Who put... Wait. She's not an enemy, at no. least. She's nice. What do you mean, squid man? Yeah, it could was you, a man. You, you're saying a lot of weird stuff. Uh, if you could even, like, uh, start from the top, let okay. us know what's going on. Okay, so... Marwin, is squid man like this man squid? Um, like this man squid. Yes, like... <gasps> I, I don't know oh my how else it could have been. Did you find Floon? <laughs> oh yeah, we did. Floon. We did. Oh, totally, was yeah, Floon we did. Was on the chair? Yeah, he was tied was to a chair and this half of him. Okay, so, okay, so I can that tell the story from here. Okay, okay, you I can, start. I, I, I can tell the story from here. Sorry. <clears throat> um, before you start, I'm going to try to sleight of hand turn the rock on. The message, the sending stone in my coat. Probably glow. You could probably see it, but I'm gonna try to be discreet about it. No, I'm trying to stall. Looks good. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> there, there's a clatter. There's a, a shift of what looks like very obvious movement in the coat pocket, but um, it's like holding otherwise the coat it's being to, to you. I'm yeah, just gonna right. smack Edmir's hand and say, Edmir, no drugs, please. <laughs> no, it, it, no, no, it's not. <laughs> Give me the okay. drugs, okay. please. Give me the drugs. <laughs> drugs? What are you talking about? Can you I guys tell my story, please? Right, I can hear. Can I please okay. tell my story? Okay, so imagine this. We're creeping through the sewers, right? and it smells and it's dark and it's oppressive and we can hear whispers from each side and then a bunch okay, of stuff less happens. detail more actual story what happened okay, look, you walk through okay. the sewers then what okay we get oh, through like the sewers and then picture. if we're voting here i like more into way more too look, sorry Ruva. look we get through the sewers and then we get to the big room and floon is in a chair right but there's a squid like a squid man like a man, right? Yeah, like that. And he stood the other side of the room. So I turn my brain on, right? And I cast a big fog cloud in the middle of me and the squid man and the chair, okay? So I shove Val to go and get the chair. And then, and then they rescue Floon and everybody disappears. And it's just me and the squid man left. And then the the, fo the, the, the fog cloud dissipates. And the squid man says some weird things. And the squid man thinks I should be careful. Um. He thinks you should be careful? That beast took you out cold. He looked into your mind and messed you up. He thinks I should be careful. He's worried about me, I think. He thinks you should be careful of you, I think. I'm sorry. This squid man, I, I don't think that this is a ally. I'm just telling you what happened. He was kind of mean, but like my parents are mean, not like Mine too. enemies are mean. No, he, he wasn't like violent he was just mean like you know He's my family yeah it's kind of oppressive yeah yeah and um so 
Uh, he he said I should be careful, and, and he imparted a warning. And I think. And then I got pulled through the floor, and it was the lady in my drawing. Have you seen my drawing? Uh, the the lady in my drawing. She woke me up, and she gave Good. me a hug. It wasn't a very good hug, but she gave me a hug. And while I was doing a sleep, after she pulled me through the floor, these three were halfway up a mountain finding a riddle for a lady who won't tell us what the riddle means. I think I covered that it. That lady? Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna point to the door. Yeah. So how are we trusting this lady? I mean... Uh, she's famous. I mean, she's I, famous I, I, and I, I she saved believe. Moen. I don't yeah. trust famous people. What is fame? She pulled me through the floor. Shit, you're right. She's, she's a Wait, clever man, magician. Be nasty to me still. I'm worried. Famous people. The only good famous people are warriors. Is she a warrior? Kind of, yeah. Like a warrior. A wizard. Ma magician she lady. A priest, I think. She's pretty cool. If you ask me. I used to be a comedian, but. I guess you're right. <laughs> you're still very funny, Edmure. Do we yeah. own this place now? Is this like ours? The top, the top five funniest people I know. Am uh, I the boss in here now? No, no. Okay, so you... Are you sure? We own this Maybe. now, right? I'm Pretty just gonna sure. clasp my hand over Morwin's mouth and be like, So we know where Morwin went. Mm. Where did you go after? You three. Oh, you sorry. rescued um, Flume? We to... Yep. We left. We came here. Uh, uh, we inherited uh, 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 London's Fark. We really should think about renaming it. Who the hell's London? Uh, and also, no, I haven't met him yet. And, uh, and then we uh, spoke to Blackstaff, and then they, uh, the lady told us to go up the mountain and talk to Iron Bender, and then that's uh, that's when the Griffin attacked us, and. Uh, Someone who is not a babbling buffoon, Val, perhaps, please? I don't know what that... else I could say. It was a little incoherent, but uh, right. Emma really has the right of it. You fought uh, a griffin? Yeah, we killed it. Yes, it bucked oh, its rider it. off midair. The poor sod went tumbling to his death. It looked like it was, it was a mad beast. It flew right towards Gordon, us. Gordon, another, to please. Just gonna grab another drink. It's ready for you. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. And then we came back here, and we told the lady the, 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 the riddle clue, and then she got all cryptic and weird, and then she went away, and then you guys were here, and I got kind of distracted. Graham, I'm are you up. okay? Me? Oh yeah, no, I'm fine. Did you get no, I, I, no, I I ate some poo earlier, um, but that was just in the sewer. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about that now, um, having faced my fears of sewers, not not poop. Um, it's a saying. Um, usually, when you fall or fail at something horrible, you'd be like, "I ate shit," but just don't go saying. I kind of drank it, you know. Okay. Oh, right. Let's change the topic. All right, more coffee. Uh, you know, I don't think it's done any lasting damage. As you guys all begin to share your information that you have each gathered from the various events and courses that your paths have flowed, um, if there's anything you don't share, especially Ruva, Morwen, let me know, and that's something that will not be transferred to the group at large. But I would like somebody, a representative of the group, to roll me 2d12 as this day ends in the City of Splendors. And it is some time before something else occurs. I bet it's going to be within some... the day. Uh, I guess I'll roll 2d12. Oh, okay. okay. Go ahead. Um, 13. Three and a Lucky number 13 later. Yep. So <laughs> as you all settle into life in the City of Splendors as owners of the establishment in which you frequent London's Fog, 
you become accustomed to this 10 day plus as the weather continues to cool the sea of swords and the wind that it carries exerts itself and influence reminding this harbored city that winter is fast approaching the trail of grain continues to come into the city as fortifications from the heartland and points south bring the much needed sustenance into the city to sustain it for the winter but all of these things become normal as you become normal in this existence in Waterdeep. And it is on the morning, 13 days after the events of the suplexing of the griffin on the mountain, of the leaving of Artemis on the docks, of the awakening of Morwen, that we reconvene in London's fog. And as the group emerges from their rooms in the back, you see that seated around a table laughing, the reserved table of Volo, Renair, and Floon, the three turn and cheer as you walk in. Hey! They all have hey! cups of coffee and tea and oh, stand up and motion you all oh, over. It's, it's you guys, hey. Hey. Oh. hey, hey, hey. Um, um, Volo, I have more drawings. Can I show you my drawings at some point? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't accept unsolicited work. I I can give you the number of my publisher. Everything Volo, legally do her a favor, to please. To... I just wanted you to It's look out at of them. my hands. I'm not allowed to do it. I just wanted you to just look it. at them and say they were good, Volo. It's not hard. I just don't... I, it's... I'm just going to look at him lit... like... Wow, this is my graduation all over again. Ruva, make a persuasion check. Or an intimidation. I'll take intimidation as well. I'll just do persuasion. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Persuasion. Oh, got a two. I can't. I, it's, it's, I want to so very much. Do I want to look at everyone's screenplay and everyone's manuscript and art, but what I just can't. I'm one man, a famous one, but one man. So, please, people. everyone. Have a seat. Have a seat, everyone. Have a seat. Morwen, dear, and put it on the wall. We'll frame it. Yes, yes! Put it on the wall! Never mind, put it in front of him. <laughs> I can't! I can't! <laughs> then I suppose I feel... we can't serve you any drink. I feel like at this point, moen has got a little book that's got like the suplexing of the griffin and like um, Lady Blackstaff and like uh, the 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 sewer and swimming through the sewer and things like that and she's she's painstakingly like drawed each one and she's holding this book knowing the volo is there like <laughs> Greg so wants this book on his coffee table I so want <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but volo is a prick I can't look at it I'm sorry look okay, I, okay. next time next time next time let's send me on more adventures and then I can get more drawings. I will send my publisher or an agent or a peripheral member of his entourage. I something will come here and you'll be able to look at it. Okay. Hey, Volo. Do good. Fun. Volo. Why, I... yes. Why are you here? Why are you here if not to not to look at Morin's draw? If not to look at my book. I know it just seems. Let's just sit down, shall we? We're all seated. We we've come here to offer you thanks. Uh, for everything that you've done, um, we, we wanted to see how everything was going. Uh, you, Renair is here, Floon. You remember Floon? They're all here. We were just sitting there. This guy. Out. We saved him. Stone. Stone oh, oh, uh, of course, yes. He looks around. There's like two university students that are paying nobody any money. I'm, I'm going to look over at Floon and say, are you all right? Floon turns to you, Ruva, having never seen you before. I'm fine. 
How are you? No one insight check, Rizma. Natural 20. Something doesn't smell right, Ruva. As you look at in, this man, in your in mind, kind of way? your mind, your senses, and as you're staring at this man named Floon, a man that you passed by in a chair who is being struck by a half orc, you remember the words of the half orc. Who are you really? I'm going to repeat them to him. Just with one kind of arm. I'm going to put my my clawed arm on his shoulder, bring him in, and say, Who are you really? His face drops. And you see that Renair Never Ember is looking between the two of you and looking at the others. Volo has stepped back a bit, but nobody is making a move. As the man that looks like Floon looks into your eyes, our eyes see all. We are unseen. And that's where we'll end this episode of Waterdeep Dragon Ooh. Eyes. Ah! Found him! Oh. Found the guy! Well, <laughs> that one of the inside shots ah. right. uh. Alrighty. <laughs> I thought they were talking Fuck. about me. <laughs> the whole time. Oh, <laughs> the time. It's all about you, Edmund. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, my friends, that Shit. is all we've got time for tonight on What Did You Dragon Heist. If you enjoyed the show, let us know. If you haven't followed the channel, hit the follow button and join us and stick around because we've got uh, some Game of Thrones coming your way in just a few minutes' time here. And we're giving away some sets of tabletop loot dice, so stick around for that as well. But holy moly, let's go around the casting crew. Did we enjoy ourselves? Where can we find you guys online? And let's kick things off tonight with Greg. Fantastic job as always, Greg. How was that tonight? Oh, I had a blast. I've been uh, really looking forward to getting everybody back together. I love this group. Um, what I wanted to say, and I wanted to wait till the outro to do so, the RP and the imagery tonight by everyone was on point. And for the very first time, as a, I believe, as a DM, GM, or keeper on Encounter Roleplay with Will's permission, I would like to give everybody a D10 of inspiration. That was fantastic. Nice. Uh, it was absolutely best there were so many fantastic moments and things to think about that i as a, a dm appreciate so much when characters are portrayed in such a way um the hacking of the griffin after it was dead to chase that trip you know the uh the the the, the walking and the charbroiling of the griffin as there was an attempt by uh graham to stay away from it Val suplex I mean, you, you, you've got the, 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 the scrapbook and the waking up and the imagery. And then, the of course, every moment. The description is so yeah, awesome. Fog, the fog was so good. And then the, the moments with Artemis and Ruva as they passed through this area. It was just, I personally loved it. I had such a great time. Grimjack21502 on the Twitches and the Twitter. I can't wait to get back to Waterdeep. I'm going to be diving into it immediately after I get off this show tonight because I already have a couple ideas for next week that I want to branch off on. This group is great. Please follow them. Please love them. Take care of yourselves in 2018. It's not a great year, but you can make it better tomorrow in the United States. I will see you all upon the morrow. Ha ha, I was muted, I was just joking. Ha ha. Uh, <laughs> let's go to uh, to Pip. How was that tonight? Hey, yes. So, so good. So, so good. I, I, like, I, I echo the sentiment. Like, I love this group. We're all we're all such sort of um, vivid role players, and that's that's super, super cool to be a part of. And I'm, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to not feel super sick. Um, it's um it's it's always great to be here. Um I'm 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 a twer gaming nonsense person 
Um, if you like people shouting about nonsense takes about gaming currently, it would seem that is my personal brand. Uh, <laughs> no, if you guys if you guys enjoy uh, me and silliness and stuff, um, check me a follow on Twitter. That's probably your best place to find me at the moment. Hopefully, Twitch streams coming again soon. Ei. Fantastic stuff. Thanks so much, Pip. And uh, James, how was that tonight? Well, that was wonderful. I loved when there's a session full of good role playing, and we have the band back together now. No longer disparate, fighting our mm. own three separate struggles. We're a team again. Um, I can't wait to see what adventures we go on now. Floon is a, a double agent. Floon is a not who he appears to be. I didn't write this. Incredible. <laughs> um, I can't wait to see what's happening. Uh, Y'all, if you want to follow me, uh, I am always on Twitter. I'm on Twitter way too much, wasting time there, at James J. Hake. I'm the lead writer for D&D Beyond. I'm an adventure designer for Dungeons & Dragons. I co-wrote Waterdeep Dragon Heist, and I'm the Dungeon Master of Worlds Apart on YouTube. Uh, I can't wait to see you next week. Peace. Thanks so much, dude. And Miff, how was that tonight? I loved it. Uh, amazing. Once again, I, I could just echo everything that uh, Greg said. Uh, but Greg, as always, wonderful uh, playing with you. Inspiration, as to say the least. Uh, watching the, watching the, I guess the first act was awesome, and then also coming in uh, in the middle of it uh, or the middle of the uh, the episode was just awesome and really cool. Just loved it. Great job, everybody. I'm so happy to be playing again and to see everybody's happy face once more uh, and to be playing with all of you again. Uh, my name is Mythomatic. I'm a roleplay streamer and voice actor here on Twitch. You can follow me on the Twitters as well as on my own channel. I stream throughout the week. Uh, got nothing else to plug, but uh, thanks for being here and I uh, can't wait for next week. So thanks again. Great stuff. And Vandy, how was that tonight? Uh, really great. I am very happy to be back in on this. Uh, I've missed D&D so much. <laughs> <laughs> so much. I've been so busy with everything and moving and TwitchCon that it feels good to kind of get back into the old routine of RP. So uh, I think Ruva also might have like a little crush on Artemis. Just a little. We'll have to see. Um, but uh, <laughs> no, it was really fun. I'm, I'm always happy to play with you guys. And uh, I am very very interested in seeing where this goes next after that roll. So, yeah. I love it. I love D&D. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, these these past uh this this past episode in fact was uh, really awesome. I loved the scene with Artemis and Ruva. Uh totally ship those two. And I've got a little crush on Artemis too as well. So that's all good. Um, but uh, we're going to carry on with tonight's shows. We're getting into uh, Game of Thrones, War of the Roses, uh, where we just had a uh, seven on seven uh, big brawl um, with all sorts of lances and madness going on. So we're going to see what happened there. Uh, if you enjoyed tonight's show, stick around. We're about to give away some sets of tabletop loot dice. But until next time, my friends, try not to roll too many that ones because we want to be here laughing when you do. Good night, everybody. <laughs>